Hey everyone! It's finally time for me to dip my toes into the world of digital versions of Uno. And by dip my toes, I mean belly flop, because today I'm going to be combining the Uno versions from Ubisoft's Uno into the Amalgam, aka Chemicards. Please, I beg you, watch the rest of this series before this one, because this video is literally incomprehensible if you're jumping in this late. Watch me combine every version of Uno into one super game slowly but surely by starting at the first part. Link in the description. Before we begin today, I want to thank every single one of my subscribers. I just recently surpassed 20,000 subscribers, and that is such a major milestone. If you were to ask my one year younger self how many subscribers he thought he'd have in a year, he'd probably say 500 if I'm lucky. It's seriously a dream come true to have an audience that cares about my silly projects, and chatting with you all, whether it be through the comments or live streams, has been an absolute blast. I appreciate every single one of you, even for doing something as simple as pressing a button. It means the world to me. Let's keep this train going, y'all! If I could do this full time, these projects would get done so much faster. 40,000, here we come! Please subscribe if you like this series. It's that special time of the video, clarification time. This one will be shorter than usual just because we have a lot to cover today. Let's talk about the selecting a player using a die thing. I got so many comments asking why the heck I would ever even think of using a d20 when there can only be 16 players and d16s exist. Two reasons. One, the D20 is providing this game with a tiny bit of future-proofing in case the player cap ever increases above 16 for whatever reason. Two, D16s are not standardized for the most part and are therefore very expensive to manufacture compared to the very standard D20. So, yeah. A similar story can be said for any other dice excluding the D12 that y'all have suggested. Like, yes, the D3 would be perfect, but they are far from standard. So are D7s, D9s, and while D100s are more standardized than the ones I just mentioned, they're super expensive due to their size and whatnot. So that's why the odd dice aren't making it in. Speaking of dice, let's talk about randomly selecting a player using dice, because this is a much more controversial topic than I realized. Firstly, how will players be assigned a number that can be rolled by a die? Well, you can kind of do this in whatever way you think is easiest. Here's two recommended ways to assign numbers. The easiest way would probably be using pieces of paper to write numbers down and then give them to players randomly. Boom. Another, very simple solution would be addressing the player who starts the game as player 1, and then the following player would be 2, and so on. Boom. You can use any method to assign numbers, really. It doesn't matter. Just do whatever is easiest for your group. Next, you don't have to use the d20 specifically to randomly select players. Use whatever die is closest to but above your current player count in number. Like if you have 9 players, use the d10. And if you roll a number that nobody has, just re-roll the die. And as long as you're using one of these methods, you shouldn't have to re-roll the die often, if at all. I swear, some of you act like re-rolling a die it makes the game unplayable. There are some optimal moves in Dungeons & Dragons that force you to roll the same die like four times and nobody complains. Clarification time over, it's time to go digital! Alright, let's talk about it. Uno. It's just called Uno, but I'll be referring to it as a Ubisoft Uno because that's what it currently is. This game actually has a long history of additions, DLCs, ownership transfers, and whatnot. So I'm going to start at the beginning and add mechanics as they were added across the different versions. The main feature of this game was playing regular Uno in a digital format, but over time several other versions of Uno were added with various themes, and because they're separate games within this one game, I'll be addressing them separately. Some of these versions, or theme decks as they're called, have nothing new about them, so if you think I forgot one, I didn't. Firstly, we have Edition 91, Uno 35th Anniversary. This one was created to celebrate Uno's 35th anniversary, as you may have guessed, and it only has one new mechanic. The Wild 35 card. Uh-oh, looks like we have yet another number mechanic combo. These Anniversary Editions love those. 
So yeah, we have a new number, it's 35. Unlike other numbers though, this number will only be useful in war-adjacent mechanics and whatnot because the mechanic of this card is specific on what card can be played on top of it. Essentially, only 3 and 5 number cards of the 4 designated colors can be played on top of this card. At least we got a 35 out of the deal. Wild card slap. Up next, we have Edition 92, which is... Uno Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. <laughs> Why did games used to have titles like this? Oh wait, I guess they still do, never mind. Anyway, we got one new card here as well, the Wild Hadouken card. When this card is played against you, you must draw cards until you draw a card with any skip ability or a reverse. Youch. This could hurt really badly, just like the ball of energy fire or whatever the Street Fighter lore is. Wild card slap. It's at this point in the timeline the game was given to Games Loft and several versions of the game were released. This will be edition 93. Notably, this version added a tournament mode, so I'll add just a simple tournament structure in the rulebook, should you want to play this way. Basically, you'll need a multiple of four players to play this mode, and it'll be divided into four player games. Divide the games randomly, it doesn't really matter. These four games will play, and the winner of each game will compete in a second game against the other three winners, and the same will go for the second place players, third place players, and fourth place players. After the second game is complete, whoever wins at the first table is the overall winner, and you'll be able to generate a ranking from there. Oh yeah, I guess you could use multiple of three players as well, but you can't use multiple of two players because you need at least three players to play. Unless, of course, you use house rules to get rid of anything related to the showdown mechanic. And I suppose you could do numbers that are higher than four as well. It just all depends on your player count, but the same rules and format still apply. If you're someone who doesn't want to keep track of a large group of players, or if you're someone who enjoys playing multiple games of the same game in sequence, you'll like this mode a lot. Anyway, moving on, those previous versions I talked about were created before Ubisoft took over, but now Ubisoft has taken over, so Edition 94 is Ubisoft Uno itself. Because outside of the various theme decks, it actually adds some cool stuff by itself. Most notably, this version adds a 2v2 mode. In this mode, two players are on a team, and if either player on your team wins, you both win. That's the basics. So this game mode is going to be added to the Amalgam. You need an even number of players to play it, as each team will have two players. And if you have more than four players, it's up to you to figure out where you want to sit in order to best help your teammate. Otherwise, you can assign seating randomly. It's whatever. If you're playing with points, all points go to both players as if the two players were one player. Pretty cool, huh? Two new ways to play in one episode, back to back. Unheard of. This mode is the only thing I'll be adding from Ubisoft Uno itself because the house rules have already been added, excluding force play and no bluffing. But as I said in previous episodes, removing mechanics is not cool. And that's all these two rules do, basically. So they will be excluded. Now let's move on to the theme packs that got added by Ubisoft. Starting with edition 95, we have Uno Rabbids. This one has been requested quite frequently by itself, as if there aren't several other theme decks present in Ubisoft Uno. This theme deck has two unique wild cards, which will fit right into the amalgam. First, we have the Wild Coming Through card. When this card is played, it does two things. First, it distributes five cards from the top of the draw pile randomly to your opponents. Basically, this means you'll roll the appropriate die five times and give cards to the five players the numbers on the die corresponds to. The same player can be rolled multiple times, and only your opponents can receive cards, meaning if your number is rolled, or if you roll a number that doesn't correspond to a player, you re-roll the die. And if you're playing on teams, you'd re-roll if your teammate got selected as well. That's only the first thing this card does though. The second thing it does is exactly the same, except this time the five cards can be given to any player, including you. Lots of dice rolls from this card. Wild card, slap. The next card is the Explosive Results card, which is much simpler. Basically, you play this card like a normal wild card, but once it's played, the next player who draws cards for any reason must draw three additional cards on top of whatever they already have to draw. Evil. 
Wild card, Slap. There are other cards in this version, but one is already represented mechanically, and the other involves adding a bug, so forgive me for not adding them. Hey y'all, um, sorry to interrupt myself here, but this is me from one day in the future talking now. So basically, the day after I recorded my audio, a wonderful YouTuber by the name of Chupo released a video talking about weird versions of Uno, and I gotta say, the video was absolutely fantastic and I enjoyed every second of it, and I'm not just saying that because a significant percentage of its runtime was dedicated to the Uno amalgam. If you haven't watched Chupo's video, I highly, 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 highly recommend it. It was absolutely a joy to watch. And also, Chupo, thank you so much for doing such an extended segment on my project. I really, really appreciate it. It was really cool to see some people commenting on my older videos saying Chupo sent me. So yeah, thank you, and I hope you've been enjoying this episode. However, in your video, you did say that it would be stupid and dumb if I skipped over one specific mechanic from Rabbids. Now, as you may have noticed, I did indeed skip over that mechanic, but since you were so fond of it, I feel like it deserves a little bit more of an explanation than I originally gave. So, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Hurry Up card. Here's what the card does. Once this card is played, for the next few turns, all players must finish their turn in three seconds, and if they don't, they need to draw a card and skip their turn. This card contains something that I have not talked about at all yet in this series, things that I like to call timer mechanics. Timer mechanics are any mechanic that would involve a timer in order to execute properly. Something like this, where your turn can only be three seconds long. Or something longer, like maybe a 15 minute timer that would be set to count down and when the timer is finished, the game ends. Things like that. There are a couple of Uno versions that have timer mechanics in them. I haven't told you guys this, but I am trying to avoid them as best as I possibly can. The reason being, adding any sort of timer to the Amalgam would increase the retail price between $5 and $10, which is a ludicrous amount for something that would only apply to a couple mechanics. And before you tell me that I should include a sand timer, sand timers only have one set time that they can be set to, or they just have a default time, which is usually 60 seconds. Something like that would almost never apply to any of the mechanics that I've discovered that involve timers. But this mechanic from Uno Rabbids in particular does not gel well with the Amalgam at all, for several reasons. One, it would involve a timer. Two, assuming that I did include a timer in the box, someone would have to manage that timer for multiple turns, and it's likely that that player would be at a distinct disadvantage because they're controlling a timer and they're trying to play. Resetting a timer for three seconds every time a turn goes by is pretty impossible without like a digital sort of interface that Ubisoft Uno has. And that is the nature of some other mechanics in Ubisoft Uno as well. There are some things that just cannot be translated well into a physical medium. It's mechanics like this that make Ubisoft Uno good, unique, and cool, because a computer can do things instantly. But when you try to translate that computer-run mechanic into the real world, it just does not gel right. Another point I want to make here is that it especially does not gel right in the Amalgam, where turns can take multiple minutes sometimes. I mean, just think, there aren't that many cards that do nothing when you play them. In normal Uno, the majority of the cards are just numbers with colors, which are easily recognizable and are easy to respond to. Meanwhile, in the Amalgam, you have things that could have like one symbol and four modifiers on one card and it takes like, I don't know, two minutes to resolve all of those things that need to be done. And that would take more than three seconds by default just because there are three things and you can't do each one in a second while also responding to what card you need to play on top of. It's just too much. It's a lot. So anyway, that's a more in-depth reason as to why I didn't add this mechanic specifically from Uno Rabbids. But like I said before, I'm not going to be adding every mechanic from every unique version. And I'm glad that this version had other amazing mechanics that I could draw from so that I could avoid this one. 
So I would like to offer my sincerest apologies to Chupo, but your favorite mechanic will not be making it in. Your video was amazing though, I appreciate it. Alright, I'm going to hand it off to past me now. Be sure to check out Chupo's video if you haven't already, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Bye! The next theme deck is Edition 96, Uno Just Dance 2017. There are four new wild cards here. And Bart, I don't want to alarm you, but one of these is ridiculous. Let's start things off with the simplest one. The Wild Worth It card. When this card is played, from that point on, only number cards can be played. If someone plays a non-number card, they must draw one card after playing it. Then the curse is broken. Okay, so far so good. Wild card, slap. The next one is the Wild Lean On card. When you play this card, all players swap places with the player that's sitting across from them. If you're playing with an odd number of players, the player who played the card is the odd person out. Everyone swaps except for the odd one out, and then the odd one out gets to stay where they are. Okay, still not bad. Definitely possible to apply some strategy with this card. Okay, here we go. This is a slightly more powerful one. The Wild Scream and Shout card. When played, forces all players excluding the player with the fewest cards to discard cards until they have the same amount of cards as the player with the fewest cards. Geez, talk about leveling the playing field. Imagine playing this when someone had Uno. Immensely powerful. Wild card, slap. This... this final card... This, this final card in the Just Dance deck... This is the one that broke me. Listen to this. The Wild Just Dance Machine card. When you play this card, all players gain a special Wild Experiment card in their hand. And when you play the Wild Experiment card, a completely random effect triggers. <laughs> what?! So not only does this one card add 16 new cards to the game, 16 wild experiment cards, one for each possible player, but the experiment cards trigger a random effect? Huh? This isn't a huge deal in the context of Just Dance Uno itself, but in the context of the Amalgam, this is terrifying. I mean, we're already in the triple digits when it comes to unique effects, and you're telling me the experiment card can cause any of them to happen? <sighs> well, don't worry, everyone. I have a plan for implementing this. For starters, along with the Just Dance Machine card getting a wild card slap, there will be 16 wild experiment cards that will have their own draw pile. All of these cards will be identical, and the backside of each will be the same as well, so you won't be able to lose your experiment if a flip occurs. Obviously, the chances of the Just Dance Machine card getting played are slim, so feel free to leave the experiment cards in the box until they're needed if your table is too crowded. Now, if the wild Just Dance Machine card is played, all players add one experiment card to their hand. Here's the fun part. When you play your experiment card, one random effect out of the hundreds of potential effects in the game will indeed trigger. Here's how you'll know which one. Along with all of the other ways to find a rule in the rulebook, each effect, whether it be a symbol or modifier or whatever, will be assigned a three-digit number. When you play an experiment card, roll the d10 three times to get three numbers. Those three numbers, in the order you rolled them from left to right, will form the number of the effect you just triggered. For example, using the numbers currently used in the rules doc, if you rolled a 1, then a 1, then a 6, otherwise known as 116, that effect is the Wild Draw 3 effect, meaning the experiment card you just played is a Wild Draw 3. Another example, if you rolled a 0, 7, and then an 8, also known as 78, the Swap Hands modifier would trigger, as if you just played a card with that modifier. Another example, if you rolled a number like 752, there currently is no effect with that label, and that's because we don't have that many effects. Yet. The solution here is to change the leftmost number to a 0, meaning you actually rolled a 52, which would trigger the jackpot symbol. 
Now, if at any point in the future there are more than 999 total effects in the game, you'll have to roll the d10 four times instead. There are some effects that will not trigger when you play the experiment card, and if this occurs, the experiment card is effectively nullified. It would still be a wild card though. For example, if you were to roll a 1, 3, and 5, or 135, that would trigger the transfer plus modifier. But because the effect normally activates when you draw the card, and because it requires a number, this would have no effect. Because you've technically already played the card. Similarly, if you rolled a 136, the doubles symbol, this would have no effect, because the card is already out of your hand and therefore cannot be stuck in your hand. There are definitely more cases like this, but just use your best judgment, okay? That may have been the single most complex card added yet. Very cool, Ubisoft. Let's move on. Edition 97, Uno Rayman. Once again, four new wild cards. I think this is the trend for the Ubisoft theme decks. One of these is already represented though, so we got three new cards from this one. Firstly, we have the Wild Little Help card. When you play this card, it clones the card it's played on top of exactly. All of the effects on the card underneath this card will be triggered. Obviously, this is extremely powerful, and there will be some effects that will not be able to be duplicated just because of how they work, so once again, use your best judgment. Wild card slap. Next is the wild escape card. When you play this card, first look at an opponent's hand privately, and then conceal your hand so nobody knows how many cards you have at any given time. This benefit is lost when you call Uno. You'll probably just have to hide your hand under the table or behind your back or something like that. Don't overthink it. Wild card slap. Finally, we have the wild punching things card. <laughs> I've never played Rayman. I don't know why this card is called that. <laughs> this is a card that can only be played on your turn just because the previous card would force you to draw cards. You can play this card to reflect those drawn cards and multiply the number of cards that need to be drawn by two. Ouch. Powerful stuff, Rayman. Nice. Up next, we have Edition 98. Uno... Uh, Phoenix's Quest? Phoenix's Quest? Phoenix's Quest? I don't know how to say that. I've literally never heard of this game. Before you ask, no, I will not be adding the sealed gods because there's only four of them and I don't want to have to invent 12 more just so each player has a unique one. Their effects would be super unbalanced in the amalgam anyway. One thing I will add is the curse symbol to eight card faces, one on each color, so four new cards total. While you are holding a card with this symbol, you must draw one card at the start of your turn. This effect stacks as well, so if you have two of these, you'd have to draw two cards at the start of your turn. So get rid of them fast. One more thing I'll add from this version is the Wild Typhon's Trick card, otherwise known as the Draw 4 Minus 2 card. When this is played against you, draw four cards, and then discard two of them at random without triggering effects. And that's all from this version, thankfully. I really didn't want to deal with the balancing nightmare of that last one. Thankfully, Edition 99, Uno the Call of Yara, has nothing like that. Wait. Dang it. So yeah, I'm not inventing 12 more character perks for the same reason as the last one. It would be a balancing nightmare. I'm also not adding a currency to the game, at least not in this case, because it wouldn't interact with enough cards to feel valid. Producing tokens is expensive, y'all. So, I'll be changing some of these pesos character ability things into cards. First we have the wild draw 1 to 6 card, which, when played against you, will force you to draw anywhere between 1 and 6 cards. Use the d6 to know how many cards you have to draw. Wild card slap. The next one is the same, except it forces everyone to draw 1 to 6 cards, except for you. Wild card slap. Finally, we have the Wild Craft a Wild Card card. <laughs> Before you play this card, discard four cards without triggering effects. Each must have a different color from all of the others. Then play this card on top of that stack. It functions as a wild card, but it allowed you to get rid of the four other cards, so it's pretty darn good. 
For the last edition of this video, we have the big edition 100, Uno Assassin's Creed Valhalla, or Uno Valhalla for short. Now this one has a lot of mechanics that I would consider a bug. For one, it has a game board with accompanying game pieces and a different mechanical currency. So I will not be including those, but this version does include a war-adjacent mechanic that will fit right in. When you play the Wild Viking Battle card, choose a player to battle. You and the other player will both play a card face down, then you both reveal the cards simultaneously. If you choose a color card and the other player does not have the same color, they must draw three. This includes wild cards, so if you play a wild card and they don't also play a wild card, they draw three. If you both play the same color or if you both play a wild card, nothing happens. If you play any color and they play a wild, nothing happens. Just another take on the war mechanic, but still unique and cool. Wow. We've combined the first 100 versions of Uno into one super game so far. I mean, technically I've added around 130 versions if you want to count them by how they're sold, but that's whatever. I think now would be a good time to do a quick recap on what's been added. So far we have 44 general rules that have been added, which is definitely more than what base Uno has, so we've at least doubled the amount of standard rules. We have 179 new mechanics, which include modifiers, symbols, and extra cards that do unique stuff. Also dice. Speaking of dice, we have 7 props in the game, and they're all dice, which is exactly what I want. The cards from the base game have been added to or altered 124 times. Now for some fun ones. In order to play the game to its fullest, you need 3 distinct food items, those being pizza, popcorn, and chocolate. 31 bugs have been squashed. We have 3 total game modes now, thanks to this episode. 7 cameo games have appeared. The game can have a maximum of 16 players. And as I said previously, 129 separately sold versions of Uno are represented in the current amalgam. Now for the big one. How many cards are in Chema cards as of writing this? Well, just remember this number is approximate due to the uncertainty of some editions but there are about 625 cards as of me writing this. Already more than Massacard's Grandest Party Edition, which has 402, so this is already by far my biggest game ever, and I'm not even done yet. We still have quite a long way to go, but we will get there. We're going to catch up Mattel very quickly in the grand scheme of things, so I hope you all will join me as I add another 100 versions of Uno to this really ugly pizza. Anyways, it's once again thank you time. I would like to personally thank Agnor99, Wichura, Cat Herder Cam, Grud, Night Sky, Skyral of the Stars, Super Saiyan Sandwich, Chazerman, Omicromium, and finally the Donation Guy. You are all unbelievably generous people, and I appreciate all of you. Donations like these are seriously beyond helpful for me and this channel. Thanks, y'all. Alright, let's wrap this episode up. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see me continue to do stupid board game stuff. And turn notifications on because I want to do more streams on YouTube. Like the video if you, in fact, liked the video. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye!